Jimmy. It's good to see you. Um, welcome. I'm Polly Trottenberg, New York City DOT Commissioner. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Mayor de Blasio, standing with my new Vision Zero partner, the new NYPD uh, Transportation Chief, uh, William Morris, and a group of others to talk about Vision Zero, both our, our progress and our challenges in 2019, talk about some of the safety campaigns we're doing this month, and highlight some of the work we're doing around the city, and, and in particular want to talk a little bit about Third Avenue in Brooklyn as well. Joined this morning by our partner in all things transportation and Vision Zero related, City Council Chairman, Transportation Chairman Adonis Rodriguez. We're also here with Community Board 2 Chair Denise Kean Smith. Oh, Denise, there you are right behind me. And Transportation Chair Sheila Lewandowski. Oh, Sheila, hi. And also, obviously, members of both the, the PD and the, and the New York City DOT teams. I'm just going to drop my mittens here. Um, we're going to talk Vision Zero, but I also do want to welcome everyone here to a very interesting new pedestrian space we have created, um, something we developed with our partners at the Voria Group. Uh, we've talked a lot this year about bike projects, obviously in part driven by the terrible spate of bike fatalities we've seen, but we've also been doing a lot of really interesting pedestrian projects, and this one here with one of the, the few glacial erratics uh, you find around New York City is something really interesting. Um, this is a Vision Zero event, so we'll start with some of the tough news. I think we all know for the first time in six years, traffic fatalities have gone up. And that's, again, why we want to talk about all the things we're doing here to lean in, our campaigns, et cetera. And I particularly want to say, it's funny, um, tragically, we've had a spate of fatalities in the past week, and we were looking at our data from last year and saw sort of the same thing last year in late December, you know, just trying to think about some of the factors. Obviously, a lot of people out, Hanukkah, Christmas shopping, and unfortunately, a lot of trucks out on the street. A lot of the recent fatalities have involved box trucks, probably many of them delivering packages and other things. So I know I know Chief Morris is going to talk a bit about the enforcement efforts, but you know, we, we brought our heat map chart here just to remind folks that this time of year when the days are short but people are out with a lot of activity, turn out, unfortunately, to often be very deadly. You know. Dark, dusk and darkness came out of that, um, you know, just again to sort of talk about the data. This time of year from November to March, sun typically sets between 5 and 6 p.m. Tonight, actually, because we're just after the shortest day of the year, it'll be 4.33. We see in those times of year that pedestrian injuries and fatalities can spike as much as 40 percent. We also have, obviously, the factor of DWIs, and again, Chief Morse will talk about some of that. I just want to talk for a minute about the trends we've seen here, some of the good trends and obviously some of the not so good trends. You know, since becoming the first city in the U.S. in 2014 to institute Vision Zero. Now, obviously, the, the worst piece of news, we've had a terrible spike in cyclist fatalities in Brooklyn. We've had 17 this year, and it's a real dramatic contrast. Last year, we had two. So we'll talk about some of the factors there, but obviously, we just had sort of a, a very unusual and tragic spike in... Brooklyn, and you know, as I always like to say, we're talking about numbers here, but these are not just numbers. These, this is our family, our friends, our co-workers, our neighbors, our fellow New Yorkers, and I know certainly from the city hall, from the mayor on down, DOT and NYPD. Obviously, we grieve over all those fatalities, and and really pushes us to want to do even more. Um, we're now, as of today, I think we're at 2015. Um, and talking about some of the factors we're seeing this year, and I've talked about some of these before, particularly we're seeing larger vehicles on the road, for example, SUVs, and that's a nationwide trend. And to some degree, when you talk to national experts, you see people are buying SUVs when gas prices are low, and gas prices are incredibly low right now, and the economy is doing well. Um, we released some data recently that shows um, the share of deadly crashes involving SUVs and light trucks. Uh, rose from 40% in the 2013 to 2017 period to 46% in the last two years. At the same time, we've seen some trends which are, you know, some positive trends. Motorcycle fatalities have declined from 40 last year to 25. And I know Chief Morris was able to put out, um, and he can talk about it a bit more, one of the changes PD has made in the way they count uh, cyclists versus motorcyclist fatalities. They're now essentially taking those who use throttle e-bikes and classifying them as cyclists um, instead of motorcyclists, which was done in years past. So, look, for, for better or for worse, in this case, that meant that five of the cyclist fatalities from this year and previous years would have likely been characterized as motorcyclist fatalities. Well, we've obviously had a difficult year in Brooklyn 
turned out to be the safest year in the Bronx. We've had, you know, and again, these are trends only to date. Obviously, things can change uh, in the coming few days. We've had 27 fatalities so far in the Bronx this year, down from 38 last year. Staten Island, so far, we're at seven fatalities, which is second safest year, down from eight last year. Manhattan and Queens, the trends are, are largely the same. So Brooklyn, obviously, is the place where we've seen this notable increase. And I think a lot of you have been there for some of the things we've announced, starting with this summer, our green wave plan. And I'm going to give a little, I'll give a little update on our progress there with a dramatic increase in protected bike lanes. This year, it looks like our final tally is going to be around 21.4 miles of protected bike lanes. Some of you joined us to celebrate the administration's 100th mile of protected bike lanes in Fountain Avenue in East New York. And under the Green Wave and then the Safe Streets Master Plan recently passed by the City Council, we're gearing up to install 30 miles of protected bike lanes in each of the next two years. And we're staffing up for that and laying out some plans, which I'll talk about later in more detail. We think we got a lot of great projects done this year, part of Central Park West, 11th Avenue, 57th, the 52nd and 55th Street Crosstown bike lanes, 4th and 7th Aves in Brooklyn, and Willis Ave in the Bronx. And for the first time this year, working with our partners at NYPD, we were very pleased we were able to maintain an uninterrupted protected bike lane along 1st and 7th Avenues during the, the UN Gem General Assembly. We've also embarked since this summer on a major expansion of our speed camera program uh, pen after the legislation passed in Albany in July. We now have 364 speed camera zones in operation. We've been installing speed cameras at the pace of around 40 a month, but coming next year we're going to pick up the pace at the mayor's request and we're going to be installing 60 cameras per month with a goal of reaching the 750 school zones by the end of next summer. Just want to talk a little bit about Third Avenue. Obviously, it has been a, a very tragic year there in Brooklyn. We've had six fatalities this year on Third Avenue, which is actually more fatalities than the previous five years combined. Uh, so a couple things I wanted to mention. I want to show a board here, which just talks about some of the projects we have done there. This is just the Sunset Park section. Some of the projects we have done and some of the upcoming capital work. And I also want to announce today we are going to lower the speed limit from 30 to 25 on the one remaining stretch of 3rd Avenue, which was essentially the stretch under the Gowanus from 65th to Hamilton Avenue. Uh, and we will be working with PD on enforcement, adjusting our speed cameras and putting up new signage. We're going to get that all done uh, first, uh, first few weeks in January. And I, you know, I just want to take a minute to reinforce that message. Um, ha you know, 3rd Avenue is a very challenging corridor. It's industrial. It's got trucks coming on and off the Gowanus, but it's increasingly residential and increasingly a place with a lot of pedestrian destinations. So we're lowering the speed limit. We'll be out there in force with both automated enforcement and working with PD, and we want to send that message. Please drive carefully on the street. We really don't want to see another fatality there. A few other projects I just want to highlight for the year that we're proud of, and particularly in our partnership with NYPD, actually the 14th Street Busway, the expansion of the pedestrian space that uh, we just unveiled with the speaker on 8th Avenue, brand new bus lanes on Church Ave and Fresh Pond Road in Queens, and obviously another thing we worked with NYPD on, the new pedestrian space in Rockefeller Center. And again, I just want to thank the chief and NYPD. I think we've had a great partnership on these projects, and it's really helped make them um, a success. Another important victory we've had this year, and we want to thank the city council, um, you know, as well as uh, my fellow commissioner uh, Garcia, is the new commercial waste collection reform effort. We think this is going to make a real effect on our streets. Um, the private carting industry in New York has been sort of notorious, not only for its safety violations, but its unsafe labor uh, practices. Since, um, since we started Vision Zero, there have been eight deaths linked to these private carding companies. We're hoping that the plan that the city council has enacted is going to dramatically reduce the number of vehicle miles traveled by these trucks. It gives new regulatory powers to the Business Integrity Commission and will require safe driver training, and we really hope help clean up that industry. I want to take a minute um, to thank all my colleagues who've worked so hard on Vision Zero, Eric Beaton, Sean Quinn, Josh Benson. We're here in our, with our Queens office folks, Nicole Garcia, Sam Dolgoff, Emily Wiedenhoff, and David Breen, who made this beautiful 
public space and many, many others. I'm, I'm blessed to have a remarkable team at DOT. And again, I just want to emphasize, this has been a tough year for us, but my folks have never worked so hard. And we're going to come back in 2020 and continuing our, our amazing efforts. Uh, with that now, I would like to turn to uh, New York's new transportation chief, Chief William Morris, who I think a lot of you know has had a pretty extraordinary career at the NYPD. And, and we're thrilled to have him as a, as a partner in this endeavor. Chief Morris. Thank you, Commissioner, and uh, good morning to everyone. My name is uh, William Morris. I'm the new Chief of Transportation. And then, although I'm a uh, recent addition to the Transportation Bureau, I began my career in the New York City Police Department more than 38 years ago in uh, 1981. Prior to this assignment of Chief, Chief of Transportation, I was the Chief of Personnel for about two years. I've also served as the Chief of uh, Manhattan South, Commanding Officer of Patrol Borough Manhattan North, and the commanding officer of the Criminal Justice Bureau, just to name a few of uh, my prior commands. You know, with this uh, new position comes new focus, and I want to ensure everyone here that the NYPD will continue to work alongside Commissioner Trottenberg and the Department of Transportation and all of the partner agencies in the city to further the mission of Vision Zero. And I'm here with the councilman here, whom I've worked with before in Manhattan South, Manhattan North, so it's great to see him, and members of the local community. So it's terrific to keep this partnership going. You know, the NYPD and DOT are committed to increasing the safety and security of motorists, passengers, pedestrians, and cyclists on the streets and highways throughout New York City. As many of you know, we're nearing the end of our fourth annual Dusk and Darkness campaign, which started on November 1st. Throughout this campaign, we have focused enforcement efforts to reduce risks to pedestrian and cyclists during the fall and winter evening and nighttime hours when daylight is reduced. This upcoming week contains the fewest daylight hours of the year, and it has the potential to be the most dangerous for pedestrians and cyclists. This was evidenced last week by the seven fatalities that occurred on our roadways. As a result, we have several citywide initiatives in effect during this campaign in which we are enforcing those hazardous violations which have demonstrated to be the greatest risk to pedestrians and cyclists associated with the darker conditions. Now, for the period November 1st, to December 18th, failure to yield to the right-of-way of pedestrian summons is issued are up almost 89 percent, about 7,628 in 2018, up to 14,393 this year. Uh, that's a sizable increase. Also, for the same period, speeding summonses have increased from 18,821 in 2018 to 18,913 this year, and bike lane moving violation summonses issued to motorists have increased by 278% from 75 in 2018 to 284 this year. Additionally, we have a 14.3% drop in pedestrian fatalities for the period November 1st to December 20th. You know, when the sun goes down and visibility is reduced, motorists are less likely to see pedestrians and the cyclists with whom they share the road. As the holiday season continues, so does the mission, mission of Vision Zero. Please understand that the NYPD has zero tolerance for drinking and driving. We will be patrolling the highways and streets 24 hours a day ensuring that any and all impaired drivers will be arrested and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. During the Dusk and Darkness campaign, as of December 18, 2019, the NYPD has affected 705 arrests for DWI. On a final note, you know, I'd like to express my appreciation for this opportunity to get my messages out I look forward to working with the Department of Transportation as well as the community moving forward. Going into 2020, we are moving forward with initiatives that include education and enforcement 
with the goals of Vision Zero in order to strive to continually reduce fatalities on all of our roadways. You know, uh, the commissioner was speaking before about some of the efforts that have been put into Brooklyn, and it may, gave me a thought. I'd just like to ask everyone who would uh, take a moment just to remember traffic enforcement agent Anthony Edgehill, who was assigned to the Brooklyn tow pound. You know, he passed away on December 2nd while he was on duty patrolling that area in Brooklyn. And certainly our thoughts and prayers are with his family, friends, and colleagues during this holiday season. If I could also just take a moment, I want to thank everybody behind me from DOT and from the NYPD. These are the folks who do the job, do the work, working with members of the community. I think we have a great team going forward. We have some challenges in front of us working together. I think we could find solutions to those. Thank you. And now I would like to call up a man who's been such a steadfast partner and champion in Vision Zero, Transportation Chair Idanis Rodriguez. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you, Chief. The first thing that I would like to do is for all of us to give a moment of silence to all those great New Yorkers that we lost in the last few days. Thank you. Look, I, I think that I know that in our heart, you know, from transportation commissioner, from chief, from mayor, for all New Yorkers, all of you guys behind the camera, all of you riding right now, we just want to say no mas. Basta ya. We can do it. We should not be losing so many great New Yorkers. Like standing a few days ago, or a few weeks ago at 116 and First Avenue with a mother who lost a three years old boy. Like, it's like, you think that that's the last press conference that we are holding on this matter. And then a few days after, you get like six individuals losing their life. And they can from different social, ethnic, and economic background. You know, the little boy, three years old, parents being, you know, Latino, a doctor killed recently at 95th and 5th Avenue, you know, different socioeconomic. And I think that, you know, this is too much. Biden say when he came to LaGuardia, this is not a third world trade center. We need to fix it. I think that is the same approach that we should have for the city of New York. This is not a country in Latin America that they don't have the resources or the men and women to enforce, to redesign, to make everyone accountable. And we're doing the best we can. I think that we need to start it. First of all, you know, I would like to add a car manufacturer nationwide to redesign. Because if we know that there's a lack of visibility when drivers make a left turn, then that has a lot to do on how we are designing the vehicle. And they need to do their part nationwide. You know, this is an epidemic that is not only affecting the city of New York. You know, we're doing our part. We're doing the best we can. And yet this year is a year that, no, we are not proud this year. But we know that from the moment when we started putting the data together, we can say that we've been reducing the number of individuals that they've been dying because they hit by vehicle. So a lot of work has been done. I'm happy to, as I said, to be working, you know, with the mayor, when the commissioner, the new person, chief, who understand, who know this city, who knows our boroughs, and he will do his job, increasing enforcement. We will continue seeing more work done to redesign it. But I feel that, you know, we need to be ready to, first of all, intersections overall have to be the centers of whatever we will continue doing. Left turn, right turn. Albany, they had to do their part. 
they need also to help the DA through the five boroughs to be in a better position, more empowered, to also prosecute on those cases. I believe that speed limit in intersection should be five miles per hour. That should be the law. When any driver is getting close to intersection, they should know that the speed limit intersection is five miles per hour, and if not, they should be then enforced and they should get a ticket. Because we, we know that we did a great job. We got Albany to help us to reduce the speed limit to 25. But that is saying by law, that is saying a speed limit when a driver turns. And we know how difficult it is for the drivers and the pedestrian to interact in those intersections. We will continue working together. We will continue supporting DOT to get all the resources that they need. And we were able to get with the leadership, with the mayor and the council, additional resources for this fiscal budget, for, for this budget. And we are ready to go back in January and add more resources so that we take any intersection with high volume of pedestrian. You know, we have to come a top priority for all. Zero tolerance for drivers, you know, that they don't respect pedestrian when they're turning. Let's get Albany to work with us to reduce the speed limit when drivers make a turn. And let's continue working together, supporting the men and women in blue, supporting DOT for the great job that they're doing. Nosotros vamos a seguir trabajando para salvar vida en esta ciudad, para seguir rediseñando las intersecciones que sean seguras para los peatones y los ciclistas. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we're happy to, uh, to take questions. Andrew. Uh, hang on, let me grab it here. Um, we're up to 117 this year, year to date. It was 115 last year. Uh, I thought the chief just said a second ago that pedestrian deaths were down 14%. We were talking about during the dusk to dawn just period. The dusk exactly. Dawn period. Okay, so right. My, just, my remarks were confined to that period. I mean, look, I have always said about Vision Zero, those of you who followed it now for six years, progress is not always going to be linear. And, you know, this year, if, if the trends sort of hold, it will nonetheless be the second safest year. And the last six years will be six of the seven safest years. So, I mean, I, this is obviously not a good year, and particularly the, the tragic spike in cyclist fatalities in Brooklyn is something we're putting a lot of resources into. But overall, I think we've made a lot of progress. There's always going to be more to do. And, you know, if you look at other cities and places like Sweden where they too have pursued Vision Zero, you know, progress is not linear there either. In Sweden, they had a period where fatalities went down, then they started to go back up again, then they've started to go back down. So, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have difficult years like this one. And, you know, I think from, from DOT and I know from NYPD's point of view, that just sort of spurs more commitment and more creativity on our part. And I think we've you know, talked about a lot of the new things we're going to be doing. And, and, and Chief Morris didn't mention, obviously, one thing we're seeing this year that's been a huge factor is trucks. And PD is doing a lot more truck enforcement. And, and the chairman mentioned vehicle design. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, new York City DOT, we're going to be involved in efforts, I think, with other partners around the country to have NHTSA is looking at sort of what their new vehicle design standards are going to be. And we're going to be really encouraging. They have traditionally very much focused on the safety of the occupants of the vehicle. I think a bunch of us want to be part of the movement to say, it's also, uh, what's the safety of how they interact with pedestrians and cyclists on the street? That should also be, as it is in Europe, part of how you get your crash rating and your, and your stars. That's pedestrians. Well, I think we th we think it's 28. I know Streets Blog counts it as 29. So, um, and what was and last year? Last year was 10. Last year was an extraordinarily low number. Just just to put it in context, the year before was 24. So that number has moved around a lot. I'm not trying to diminish what a difficult year it's been. And again, I think one thing we mentioned methodologically this year, 
cyclist fatalities, which in previous years would have been counted as motorcycle fatalities, are this year on full throttle e-bikes being counted as cyclist fatalities. And how many would, it, would that account for? Five. Uh, you know what, I, l I'm, let me, David, I don't know if we've, we've calculated the most recent number. It was definitely in terms uh, of sort of before the past couple weeks, I forgot, but it was higher than it had been uh, the average in previous years, but let it, let us get it. And look, there's, you know, as you all know, the spate of fatalities that we've just had this past week, I think f four of them involved trucks. Well, we were realizing, you know, last year, some of you may remember, we saw a terrible spike in fatalities at this time of year last year. And part of it is sort of the dusk and darkness data we have that it gets dark earlier. But I I've just been realizing, I mean, I've been sort of walking around the streets myself this weekend because of the holidays. There's so many people out on the streets, people shopping, going to Hanukkah celebrations. And every year, as we know, the New York Times wrote about it, um, we're seeing more and more packages get delivered. So more and more trucks are around the streets. And, and I have to say, just to the naked eye, and I'd love Chief Morris to talk about this, I see a lot of dangerous behavior with trucks. I, I mean, in my own neighborhood, I see them racing through red lights. I see them backing up in places where I don't think their visibility is good. So I don't know if Chief Morris wants to talk a bit about, or someone wants to talk a bit about truck enforcement. So it, we, we spoke about the uh, recent fatalities. In, in the last week, we had uh, seven fatalities. Uh, just to amplify what the commissioner spoke about before, three of them involved uh, pedestrians being hit by a box truck, and one involved a person being hit by a private sanitation truck. So we can see that trend, at least in the immediate numbers, with uh, vehicles. Now, one of the things that we did moving forward was we took a look at uh, truck enforcement through, uh, throughout the city. And uh, we put together a uh, program uh, looking, at, we amplified it this weekend, looking at truck enforcement, particularly looking at our highway folks uh, to, do some, uh, to do truck inspections in the city. And uh, we, we see with our trends, let me, uh, let's see, for the weekend, uh, we did a safety initiative. We, did, we inspected a total of 213 trucks uh, there were 385 moving violations, and as a, enforcement by our folks, we had uh, over uh, 1,000 uh, summonses, uh, criminal court summonses issued, and we placed eight vehicles out of service. So we could see that that trend is right there, as the commissioner spoke about before. Did, is that, is that did this start right after these so, fatalities, or just this weekend, your enforcement, and is this... Uh, so, so I, I think I'm very forthright. This is my 11th day as the uh, chief of transportation. When I saw this uh, increase in the, the seven fatalities, I wanted to put together a strategy right away. Uh, this is very much what uh, Commissioner Shea speaks about with precision policing. We take a look at the data. We see what does that data mean. And then we design a strategy to address the trends that we see as a result of that data. And this, this effort came as a result of that. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm going to continue truck enforcement. Yes. I guess the big question is, though, you've got thousands of miles of streets and, you know, trucks are turning all the time onto side streets like 49th Street. How does that enforcement prevent these incidents from happening? The one in Soho, the guy was backing up. The other one, you know, the private party uh, truck was, was making a turn and didn't yield. You know, how do you change the behavior? I'd, I'd like to just back up for one second. Uh, the commissioner alluded to it, and so did the chairperson before. You know, every one of these numbers is a person, and and every one of these fatal acts, uh, fatal collisions, is uh, thoroughly investigated by the collision investigation squad. And you know, we in the NYPD, I think all of us, are very mindful of the impact this has on individual persons and their larger families. What enforcement is designed to do is to change behavior. So we, we do this enforcement, it's done publicly, folks see it happening, and we hope that it affects the larger group of people who might engage in that. We also rely upon members of the media to put this information out 
that we are investigating these collisions, that we are looking at trends, we are looking at where this is happening, and we're going to be where it's happening. Can we be every place all the time? No. But we can be where we see these collisions occur. One other thing that I want to add on Chogas, you know that DOT, together with DCAS, also they've been working installing the SARGAR, you know, in our city fleet. We also want to see all the, anyone that do private, that do business with the city, uh, from the truck association also to install safeguard. You know, like you heard from one of the a person who saw the young lady killed at, at, in, in downtown that she say how she saw the body being under the, the wheel, the wheel of the truck. So I think that, you know, as I, as I say that the, Manu that the car manufacturer, they should do their part. I also feel that the truck associations, that you know, with whom we've been having good conversation. I know that they've been on the table with DOT. Also, we've been meeting. They are open to get their members to do their part. You know, they had to come back to the table and identify, figure out different way on how their members also we do their part to 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 make our our city safe you know for pedestrians and cyclists like you know i in many places we see those big truck parked in the city of new york in area that they are not allowed to and i know that with the new approach i hope again that none of them will be you know in those locations i see in the street i have seen even in the crossroads like at the exit of your avenue in the area that there's no truck supposed to be. There's always like in the evening hours, like a two trucks, you know, yes, resting in that area. So our message is also that all members of the truck association, they need to do their part. But in my case, as, as I, you know, from the role of the chairman of the transportation committee, we're ready to continue conversation. And I know that in another occasion, trying to get any private sector who do business with the city, that they use trucks, they should install safeguard. Well, right, and I think you heard from you heard from the chief uh, about some of the enforcement efforts, and from the chairman about side guards. We, you know, we are certainly looking for ways to reduce truck traffic on our streets. One of the things we recently announced was a pilot project uh, to start working with the big shipping firms to do cargo bikes, and you know, we're hoping that can take more trucks off the street and replace them with folks on bikes. And you know, it's funny. I, I get people complaining to me about the trucks on the streets, and I'll say, well, how many packages did you order from Amazon this week? And Usually they'll acknowledge they got a couple. So, uh, you know, that is certainly the rising trend. We are spending a lot of time with the freight industry, cargo bikes, and looking for other ways that they can potentially consolidate their packages and do more hand trucking and reduce those vehicle mile travels on the roadway. We also are working with the New York State Truckers Association. One thing, you know, we, we were mentioning sort of big vehicles. I mean, to be fair, the city fleet has a lot of big vehicles. The MTA has a lot of big vehicles. But our drivers now go through a lot of very rigorous training. We have telematics in the vehicles that tells them instantly when they're spe speeding or engaging in unsafe behavior. We've worked with families for safe streets and transportation alternatives. And I think you've seen overall the safety record of the city fleet has improved tremendously. So, you know, in some cases, maybe we're not going to get rid of the vehicle, but there's a lot drivers can do to improve what they do behind the wheel. drive safely. You know, uh, I, I just want to speak about your question a little bit before, and I think you got uh, some from the commissioner and the chairperson before, is there's a lot of things going on all, all at once. Summonses, enforcement, in thorough investigations of uh, those, colli uh, those collisions that do occur. That's one part of it. But there's also other things going on. There's communication with the Trucking Association. One of the things that the uh, police department's working on right now, there'll be a subsequent briefing about, is we're planning for the New Year's Eve celebration in Times Square. As you all know, there will be a lot of uh, road closures associated with that. 
there'll be an impact not only on ve uh, ve you know small car, but also on trucks. We're reaching out to the trucking association to make sure they know what roads they can go on and what roads they can't. So you spoke before about turns. No, we can't be at every intersection where every turn is being made, but we can put our prior information to this industry to let them know what the road routes are, what the routes are, so that persons don't wind up getting lost and making those unnecessary turns. Every little bit helps. Every piece of this helps. Can I just go over some of the numbers you I think we address the violations that we see and observe as, as to larger trends and patterns. We'll continue to analyze the data that we see and see if we can draw some uh, conclusions regarding that. Certainly I'm willing to listen to what anybody has to say regarding their observations because they're an important component as we develop a strategy moving into 2020. Yes, that between. amounts to about four, uh, four failure to yield tickets per precinct per day, about five speeding tickets per precinct per day. That doesn't sound like an astoundingly high number of tickets per precinct per day. So that doesn't sound like a very big crackdown. Is there more coming? Well, I, I think summonses are part of the strategies that we've talked about here. It's something that we work on. We'll take a look at it and see, you know, this is all about driver behavior and keeping pedestrians and cyclists safe. So we'll take a look at it. It's not the purpose of summonses for summonses. It's designed to address conditions. Every, every collision that we investigate, you know, is, is taken on its own. We, we take a look at it. Uh, it's, it's not an issue of, um, you know, strategy in that moment. It's an issue about what happened at that time and place. So we'll continue to investigate every collision that, that we have, and every fatal collision will be investigated by the Collision Investigation Squad. Yes, sir. But cyclist deaths are way up too. And so I, I just wonder, are the summonses enough? Are the fines too low? Is that part of the discussion that a summons in and of itself doesn't change driver behavior? I, I don't think that we're in a position to answer that question at that moment. It, it's a, um, a strategy that we, the police department, have to address a condition that we, that we observe. Whether or not that summons is enough to change the behavior, if that's enough of a penalty, is something that we'll continue to examine as part of the Vision Zero collaborative effort moving forward. I, I will just say one, one statistic on the automated enforcement on speed cameras. In places where we put them, speeding goes down by over 60% and crashes and injuries go down by like 17 percent so and, and a lot of people who get that first speeding summons don't get a second over 80 percent so I, I think that at least speaks to the potency of automated enforcement when you get a moving violation from nypd the fine is higher it's potentially points so i would presume that it would have some effect and just i think someone was asking the question about what else can be done on trucks of speaking and, and of the challenge of pd can't be everywhere all the time that's part of why the city is so aggressively putting up speed cameras. And I, I don't have details now, but we're certainly talking to our partners up in Albany and, and thinking about, is there more that could potentially be done with automated truck enforcement? So, so that, I think, is a potential legislative area to be looking at in 2020.
tickets, they pay a reduced fine to settle it. If he parks in like a meter and doesn't pay the meter to get off the street, he, he, they have to pay the full fine. Is there any thought to reevaluating how tickets are issued and how they're settled to get these trucks? To, they can park, double park, and there's still space they could have pulled over, and they don't because they're told not to because they'll have to pay more for the ticket. So some of you know this year, <laughs> The DOT and Department of Finance did announce some revisions to that fine schedule. And, and I think just, just to be clear about what you're referring to as the stipulated fine program, because I, I think that's a program that, that's a lot about it is not particularly intuitive. Some years back, the city started a big crackdown. Maybe, maybe Chief Morris would remember this on trucks uh, that were double parking and engaging in illegal behaviors and the freight industry got very angry about it and said to the city we're going to contest every ticket and they started contesting every ticket and it became for the city sort of for the department of finance and for oath very overwhelming and so the program was conceived of a way of trying to get at you know rather than fighting about every single ticket which was not working well for the city pay us a certain amount and we won't spend all our time adjudicating. I think we've all agreed, and I know Commissioner Jiha agrees and the mayor agrees, we need to update that program. We did some updates this year, and I will just say this, stay tuned. I think more updates will be coming in 2020. So um, I know Streets Blog has covered this topic rather breathlessly uh, in Manhattan, where one, one community board has really leaned into that. As part of the congestion pricing legislation, New York City DOT has been tasked with doing a parking study to look at neighborhoods that will be affected by congestion pricing. And you know, part of that, I think, will be some deliberation on potentially residential parking. I would recommend to everybody who's interested in this question, look at the report that uh, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer put out, where she looked at a bunch of cities in the US and abroad. And I, I think the conclusion from that is the devil is in the details. Cities, many cities that do something like residential parking, they charge 20 bucks and they give out unlimited parking permits, that, that doesn't really, I think, accomplish the goals that people are looking for, which is reducing vehicles on the street. It, it, hold on, we'll, we'll get to that in one sec. So, you know, if, if, you, if, if this is something, you know, that people are really interested in pursuing, you've got to both cap the number of permits and presumably set the fee at something that it has some effect on behavior. I think that is a, probably a big political debate above my pay grade, but at least from DOT's point of view, we'll be doing some of the data gathering and analysis to help inform that discussion as congestion pricing gets underway. Yeah, the fo yeah, was it, yeah and it, we'll, we'll come to falling ice, but any more on topic? Do you want to speak If you don't that? mind, as you, yeah, as you know, I had the bill uh, at the council that is calling for New York City to establish citywide street parking, the resolution is a parking permit, but more than, we will continue again having the conversation with DOT. Probably one of the things that we can look at it to explore is to do some pilot projects to see how they go and to see how things, how the program is working, as you know, in Boston, even Albany has, you know, the residential parking. But I feel that, you know, the day, today is about, you know, vision zero. And one of the things that I got to say that when people ask a question, well, and what about pedestrians that are distracted by using the phone? What about pedestrians that, you know, the, the cyclists that they are no, you know, obeying the law, things like that? Guys, everyone should know. Most of New Yorkers and visitors who die in a crash die because the drivers who are driving over the speed limit. He passed a stop sign, a red light. He was drunk. In none of those cases where most individual die because of a crash. That happened when the drivers were driving in speed limit. We even say during the, the DJ uh, uh, Paul from La Mega that we knew that he was not crossing the right intersection, but the drivers were driving like 50 miles per hour. So that's the cause of most of those crashes. It's about drivers that they are not taking the necessary precaution to maintain the safety of pedestrians and cyclists, and that's the message today. The message is about on all of us, 1.4 million New Yorkers that own vehicles. We need to take responsibility 
to protect our cyclists and pedestrians. No, we. The pedestrians should be educated within that as well. Yeah, we are. And, and by the way, the, can the mayor and the commissioner and the council together, we put together like this, like, I don't know, three or five million dollars for the Vision Zero educational aid, aid campaign. And that campaign is about sharing the street. This campaign is about inviting everyone, drivers, pedestrians, and cyclists to do their part. But the individual who are behind a wheel, or something that weighs, you know, tons, are not pedestrians, are not cyclists, are drivers. So everyone has to take responsibility. What I say is that most cases where someone died in a crash, that happened because the driver was driving over the speed limit. Because he did not respect a light, he did not respect a stop sign. So we need to be sure that, you know, we make the drivers the one that has most of the responsibility for all those crashes that happen in the city. And I would just, I would add one more thing to that. P PD and, and DOT, we do a lot of work along our Vision Zero Priority corridors with schools, with senior centers, and we do have a message that everyone has a role to play. But to emphasize what the chairman just said, and I think some of you saw we just rolled out a new uh, Vision Zero campaign called Was It Worth It? And this is a conversation that I, I've had with many motorists who would make that complaint. Well, pedestrian cyclists, they're jumping out. They're, and, and I always sort of have the same answer. New York City streets are busy. They, they can be chaotic. The unexpected can happen. But you behind the wheel, if you're going at a safe speed and the worst thing happens and a collision happens, if you're going at a safe speed, you're both much more likely to walk away. And, and that's, again, the holiday message I would have here. Whether you feel you're in the right or you're in the wrong, behind the wheel, this, sort of the power is yours. If you're going at a nice low speed, and as the chairman says, take those turns at five miles an hour, then if the unexpected happens, we won't have a fatal result. And I know for all of us at this time of year, we particularly want to see everyone get home safe to their families. Commissioner, you have mentioned SUVs, however. And I want to ask the chief, you know, the commissioner has mentioned that a, a a large proportion of crashes are involving, fatal crashes are involving SUVs. Now, as you know, the police department itself is on an SUV buying binge. Over the last two years, the department is much more likely to be buying squad cars that are SUV based as opposed to sedan based. Why would you do that given the statistics you've heard from the, the commissioner? The department purchases cars based upon uh, the need, the particular need. Um, I, I would say that uh, I'm outside my lane there as far as uh with no pun intended which uh which vehicles uh that we buy we we purchase vehicles that uh satisfy the needs of the police department can you talk about the falling ice have any streets been reopened uh, the, um the latest information that i had uh when i came uh, there were a number of streets closed on uh friday saturday and sunday uh, unexpectedly due to falling ice from buildings the most recent uh, information that I have is that uh, there were two streets still closed, West 5A from 5th to Broadway and 6th Avenue from West 5-7 to Central Park South. That may have changed since the time that this uh, press conference began. Do you know of any uh, damages? I don't, I don't have that information at this point. We are, we are definitely having those conversations with our sister cities. I can't, I can't I'm not going to give you any specifics right now, but, but stay tuned. It's certainly an ongoing discussion. What can be done about the floor? I'm going to give that one to Chief Morris. <laughs> Hope for summer early. <laughs> um, you know, it, we, we, the police department, we have to deal with the reality of what's occurring there. When falling ice is, is falling, we have to clear the area and make sure it's safe, and then we wait for building engineers to make a decision. The police department deals with the situation at hand. The situation at hand that we're dealing with is the falling ice. All right. Listen, I want to thank you all for being here today and for helping us get the message out. We really would like to hopefully end this year on a, on a better note than we've just seen. So, so happy holidays, everybody. Thank you.